How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're gonna to be working on a chainsaw that has a stuck chain break. But instead of showing you just how to reset the chain break, I also wanna focus a little bit on the fundamentals of how the system works, why the chain break gets seized up in the first place, how to clean the chain break system. I'll show you why you should lubricate the system to prevent it from seizing up in the future. And then finally, at the end of the video, I'll show you how to properly reset the chain break. We'll then take the chainsaw outside, fire it up, and show you the fruits of our labor. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So I had a Husqvarna chainsaw come into the shop today. I've disassembled just the uh, outer casing here of the chainsaw. This is actually your break and I'll explain how that works in a second. But you're gonna see that I've taken some washers and just stacked them up there and put the nut back onto the threaded stud coming out of the chainsaw. And that's just to hold the bar with the chain in place so that the bar doesn't flip up like that. So if I go ahead and rotate this, this is our centrifugal clutch drum here that I'm rotating. You can see the chain moves nice and freely, but uh, my customer actually said that the blade brake was stuck. So the way that the blade brake works is you have this handle up here and uh, it has a return spring so that when you push it forward, it snaps back. And when you pull it this way, it snaps back. You're going to notice that there's three little cogs here, right? And if you come over to this, this goes like this onto the chainsaw here and that little gear lines up with that plastic gear. A lot of times I see that these get completely stripped out. So then you just simply have to replace this whole handle. In this case, uh, this is seized up, it's not moving. So the way that this system works is you have this gear here and there's a spring underneath here. And you can see that there's this little piece of spring steel that wraps around. So the way that this works is you probably already figured it out. You rotate this gear here and it's going to tighten this or loosen this. And if this band gets a smaller diameter, then that's going to stop your clutch drum here from spinning, thus stopping the chain from moving. So that's how the blade brake works. And obviously this is a centrifugal clutch. So if you wanna know how that works, basically you get on your throttle and the faster the crankshaft is spinning, it will overcome these little springs here and these two pads push outwards and then they grab this drum which then starts spinning your chain so easy fix here i believe a lot of times these get filled with sawdust and uh, you end up running into this issue it just seizes and doesn't work as it should so everything else seems to work fine it's not the chainsaw side that i need to worry about uh, so i'm gonna pull off this plastic cover and we'll have a little closer inspection so once you get those four screws removed we can simply slide this little piece out of the way and you guys can see just how much gunk gets in there so like i said this system up here normally just gets clogged filled with so much gunk that uh, it can't physically move at this point i am going to clean this up that's the first thing is you want to get it as clean as possible and then we can go ahead and start lubricating all of these pivot points Right, So we want to make sure that this is lubricated here because you guys are going to notice that this slides in and out in order to move this band here. And this is a pivot point here and that's a pivot point there. So we're just going to go ahead and clean it first. So I'm just in the back of my shop here and I'm using a combination of my ultrasonic cleaner and just a little bit of spray nine. Shout out to Permatex for sending that my way. So I've blasted it with the spray nine. I'm gonna just dunk this upside down like this into my ultrasonic cleaner. Then I'm just gonna run this until it's clean. Okay, so it's out of the ultrasonic cleaner now. Everything's all cleaned up. You guys can see that this is looking much cleaner. I've gone ahead with my compressor and just used the compressed air to blow out all of the debris underneath this spring here. So what I'm gonna do now is, like I said, lubricate all of the pivot points. I'm gonna lubricate under this little uh, Teflon piece here. So I've coated everything with a little bit of release all, and I'm just gonna go in here to try to manipulate this. And you can see that things are starting to move a little easier now. So now that we have everything cleaned up and lubricated using some release all, you can use whatever you want, but I wouldn't recommend using something like a white lithium, which is going to leave a lot of sticky residue around for dirt and debris to stick to. So you could use something like a black graphite, which is a dry graphite lubricant, or in this case, I just used a little bit of release all. And we tried to manipulate this ourselves. So we know that this isn't bound up. And we also know that this gear up here was moving so that, uh, you know, as this travels downward, this extends, which then pushes that back. Now, you cannot replace this cover 
in the current position, even with this plastic piece bolted down. And that's because the blade brake is currently in what's known as the tripped position, or the blade brake is engaged, which means that the diameter of this spring steel band here is going to be smaller than the diameter of your clutch drum, which means that you will not be able to physically put this cover onto your chainsaw. We are going to have to reset the chain brake into the disengaged position. So the spring is gonna be fully compressed and this band is going to have the maximum slack on it, which is gonna open up the diameter of this circle here. But you do not want to attempt doing that with this cover off because you could try to push this and this could pop out and you could severely injure yourself. So what we're gonna do now is simply go ahead and replace this plastic cover. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my four screws reinstalled now, and then I'll show you how to properly rotate this gear up here so that we can compress that spring and open up our chain brake here. And then we'll be able to take this and reinstall it onto our chainsaw. So I have the outer cover clamped into my vise here. You're gonna notice I am using the pieces of wood to prevent the metal jaws on the vise from damaging the aluminum housing. And what we're gonna be doing here is we're going to be physically manipulating that three piece gear there. And to do that, I'm going to be using a 9 16 wrench. We're going to be using the opened end to rotate that. And I have a number three Phillips screwdriver here. You can use any kind of piece of steel that'll fit through the boxed end. And that's what we're gonna to use to apply torque to this here. So with the opened end of the wrench positioned against two of the pieces on the gear there, you're simply going to come back to your screwdriver and apply a clockwise rotation and it will reset that spring. Now with the wrench against those gears and the screwdriver through the wrench, I'm gonna go ahead and apply that clockwise rotation. You are going to hear a snapping sound. And now the spring is compressed and the chain brake has been released. So we're back on the workbench now. And if we look here, we can see that that arm has been pushed down. So we know that that gear now rotates, which then dropped that arm into this position. So as this arm came down from this cog here, that little bracket pushed like this and that compressed the spring, which then set our spring into the loaded position or the disengaged position. So when your chain brake is disengaged, the spring is actually loaded, which is why you wanna have this plastic cover on there. You don't want that spring shooting out and hurting you. Now, this steel band here, you're gonna notice that it has popped out. That's okay, we can go ahead and just push this back in until it fits. Might need two hands to do that. But now you can see the difference in the diameter. So now if we had a drum, we'd be able to put the drum inside of here. So once I get this back into the seated position, it's gonna be a little tricky with one hand, but I'll get that back seated, and then we'll go ahead and drop this back onto our chainsaw. So I just used a small slotted screwdriver here to pry in the steel band, and then I just used the back of the screwdriver to go ahead and just tap that down into the seated position. So like I said, we are now ready to reinstall this cover onto our chainsaw. But before we do that, I just wanted to show you the chain adjuster. So this little nub here sits on a threaded rod and on the other side of that threaded rod is a little screw, which then adjusts this little nub here. And that nub is going to correlate with this hole in the bar. Depending on the make and model and design of your chainsaw, it could go here, it could go up here. You know, there's always going to be a different design, but for the most part, as you turn that screw in one way or the other, it's going to position your bar farther out or farther in. Farther in, there's gonna be more slack on your chain. Farther out, there's going to be more tension on your chain. So I'm now ready to go ahead and take this, drop this into place. We just gotta line those up. And then we'll go ahead and line up the nub there for our chain adjuster. We can see we're not quite there. So I'm just gonna reposition this, get it to sit down flat, and then I can go ahead and get my nut there and secure that onto the chainsaw. Now, when you reinstall the nuts onto that side cover there, you don't wanna tighten them up too much. You just want to get them snug, and that's because we still want to set the tension of our chain. So right now we can see that the chain is popping out of the bar. So as I twist this clockwise, you're gonna see that chain start to tension up. Now I've always been taught you go to the center of the bar here and you're simply just going to pull on the chain and you wanna be able to see the ends of the uh, teeth on the inside there. And then you're gonna come up to the front and you're going to try to pull on the nose right here and that should not come out. So 
The chain should not come out at the nose of the bar, but at the center of the bar, you should be able to pull it just a little bit. So we're at the proper tension. So now I can go ahead and tighten up the bar nuts, but that takes care of the Husqvarna chainsaw. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten those up and then I'll bring this outside, fire it up. We'll engage the chain brake, we'll disengage it, we'll make sure everything goes through its proper functions and I can return it to my customer. go guys so that's all fixed up and i can return this chainsaw to my customer so that's it for today's video we were able to successfully reset the chain brake like i said it was just simply seized up because of all the dirt and debris that got in there so we went through it we cleaned it we lubricated it to prevent it from getting seized up again we reset it we reinstalled it and now the chainsaw works as intended if you guys enjoyed the video think about leaving me a thumbs up you know it really helps me out you can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos I upload every single week, so be sure to stop by next week, check channel out for new content, and as always guys, thanks for watching.